artifacts, rare books, ancient documents, and artworks of immense historical value, and Mount Athos has been listed as a World Heritage Site since 1988. Although Mount Athos is technically part of the European Union like the rest of Greece, the status of the monastic state of the Holy Mountain, and the jurisdiction of the Athenite institutions, were expressly described and ratified upon admission of Greece to the European Community precursor to the EU. The free movement of people and goods in its territory is prohibited, unless formal permission is granted by the monastic state's authorities, and only males are allowed to enter. Of the larger Chalkidiki Peninsula in central Macedonia, protrudes 50 kilometers (31 miles) into the Aegean Sea at a width of between 7 and 12 kilometers (4.3 and 7.5 miles) and covers an area of 335.6 square kilometers (129.58 square miles). The actual Mount Athos has steep, densely forested slopes reaching up to 2,033 meters (6,670 6 feet). The surrounding seas, especially at the end of the peninsula, can be dangerous. In ancient Greek history two fleet disasters in the area are recorded. In 492 BC Darius, the king of Persia, lost 300 ships under General Mardonius. In 411 BC the Spartans lost a fleet of 50 ships under Admiral Epicleus. Though land-linked, Mount Athos is practically accessible only by ferry. The Agios Pantolaimon and Axion Estin travel daily weather permitting, between Orinopolis and Daphne, with stops at some monasteries on the western coast. There is also a smaller speedboat, the Agia Anna, which travels the same route, but with no intermediate stops. It is possible to travel by ferry to and from Irisos for direct access to monasteries along the eastern coast. The number of daily visitors to Mount Athos is restricted, and all are required to obtain a special entrance permit valid for a limited period. Only men are permitted to visit the territory, which is called the Garden of Virgin Mary, by the monks, with Orthodox Christians taking precedence in permit issuance procedures. Residents on the peninsula must be men aged 18 and over who are members of the Eastern Orthodox Church and also either monks or workers. Athos in Greek mythology is the name of one of the Higantes that challenged the Greek gods during the Gigantomachia. Athos threw a massive rock against Poseidon which fell in the Aegean Sea and became Mount Athos. According to another version of the story, Poseidon used the mountain to bury the defeated giant. Homer mentions the mountain Athos in the Iliad. Herodotus writes that, during the Persian invasion of Thrace in 492 BC, the fleet of the Persian commander Mardonius was wrecked with losses of 300 ships and 20,000 men, by a strong north wind while attempting to round the coast near Mount Athos. Herodotus mentions the peninsula, then called Acte, telling us that Pelasgians from the island of Lemnos populated it and naming five cities thereon, Sane, Cleonai, Tysis, Olafsos, and Akrothoi. Strabo also mentions the cities of Dion Diem, and Akrothoi. According to the Athenite tradition, the Blessed Virgin Mary was sailing accompanied by Saint John the Evangelist from Joppa to Cyprus to visit Lazarus. When the ship was blown off course to then pagan Athos, it was forced to anchor near the port of Clement, close to the present monastery of Iviron. The virgin walked ashore and, overwhelmed by the wonderful and wild natural beauty of the mountain, she blessed it and asked her son for it to be her garden. A voice was heard saying, Aista ho topos autos kleros sos kai parabolion sun kai paradezos a ti de kai limon soterios tun thelenton southerni. Translation. Let this place be your inheritance and your garden, a paradise and a haven of salvation for those seeking to be saved. From that moment the mountain was consecrated as the Garden of the Mother of God and was out of bounds to all other women. Historical documents on ancient Mount Athos history are very few. It is certain that monks have been there since the 4th century, and possibly since the 3rd. During Constantine I's reign 324-337 both Christians and pagans were living there. During the reign of Julian the Apostate 361 the churches of Mount Athos were destroyed, and Christians hid in the woods and inaccessible places. Later, during Theodosius I's reign 379 the pagan temples were destroyed. The lexicographer Hesychius of Alexandria states that in the 5th century there was still a temple and a statue of Zeus Athenite. 
After the Islamic conquest of Egypt in the 7th century, many Orthodox monks from the Egyptian desert tried to find another calm place, some of them came to the Athos Peninsula. An ancient document states that monks, "...built huts of wood with roofs of straw and by collecting fruit from the wild trees were providing themselves improvised meals." The chroniclers Theophanes the Confessor end of 8th century and Georgios Kedrenos 11th century wrote that the 726 eruption of the Thera volcano was visible from Mount Athos, indicating that it was inhabited at the time. The historian Genesios recorded that monks from Athos participated at the 7th Ecumenical Council of Nicaea of 787. Following the Battle of Thassos in 829, Athos was deserted for some time due to the destructive raids of the Cretan Saracens. Around 860, the famous monk Ephthymios the Younger came to Athos and a number of monk huts, Sket of Saint Basil, were created around his habitation, possibly near Crea Nera. During the reign of Emperor Basil I the Macedonian, the former Archbishop of Crete and later of Thessaloniki, Basil the Confessor built a small monastery at the place of the modern harbour of Hilandariu Monastery. Soon after this, a document of 883 states that a certain Ioannis Kolovos built a monastery at Megali Vigla. On a chrysobal of Emperor Basil I, dated 885, the holy mountain is proclaimed a place of monks, and no laymen or farmers or cattle breeders are allowed to be settled there. The next year, in an imperial edict of Emperor Leo VI the Wise we read about the so-called ancient seat of the Council of Girondes Council of Elders, meaning that there was already a kind of monks' administration and that it was already ancient. In 887, some monks expostulate to the Emperor Leo the Wise that as the monastery of Kolovos is growing more and more, they are losing their peace. In 908 the existence of a protos, first monk, the head of the monastic community, is documented. In 943 the borders of the monastic state were precisely mapped, we know that Caris was already the capital and seat of the administration, named Megali Messi Lavra, big central assembly. In 956, a decree offered land of about 940,000 square meters (230 acres) to the Zirapadamu Monastery, which means that this monastery was already quite big. In 958, the monk Athanasios the Athenite (Agios Athanasios Omicron Athenites) arrived on Mount Athos. In 962, he built the big central church of the Protaton in Caris. In the next year, with the support of his friend Emperor Nikephorus Phocas, the monastery of Great Lavra was founded, still the largest and most prominent of the twenty monasteries existing today. It enjoyed the protection of the Byzantine emperors during the following centuries, and its wealth and possessions grew considerably. During the 11th century, Mount Athos offered a meeting place for Serbian and Russian monk scribes. Russian monks first settled there in the 1070s, in Zylorgu Monastery in 1089 they moved to the St. Pantalimon Monastery, while the Serbs took over the Zylorgu. From 1100 to 1169 the St. Pantalimon Monastery was in a state of decay and such Russian monks as remained in Mount Athos lived at Zylorgu among the Serbs. In 1169 the Serbs received St. Pantalimon, which they shared with the Russians until 1198, when the Serbs moved to the Holandar Monastery, which became the main center of Serbian monasticism. The Russians then remained in possession of St. Pantalimon, known since as Rasakhan. The Fourth Crusade in the 13th century brought new Roman Catholic overlords, which forced the monks to complain and ask for the intervention of Pope Innocent III until the restoration of the Byzantine Empire. The peninsula was raided by Catalan mercenaries in the 14th century, a century that also saw the theological conflict over the hesychasm practiced on Mount Athos and defended by Gregory Palamas In late 1371 or early 1372 the Byzantines defeated an Ottoman attack on Athos. Serbian lords of the Nemanjic dynasty offered financial support to the monasteries of Mount Athos, while some of them also made pilgrimages and became monks there. Stefan Nemanja helped build the Holandar monastery on Mount Athos together with his son Archbishop Saint Sava in 1198. From 1342 until 1372, Mount Athos was under Serbian administration. Emperor Stefan Dusan helped Mount Athos with many large donations to all monasteries. 
In the charter of Emperor Stefan Dusan to the monastery of Holandar the emperor gave to the monastery Holandar direct rule over many villages and churches, including the church of Svetog Nikol Udobrusti in Prizren, the church of Sveta Arhandala in Stip, the church of Svetog Nikol in Vranje and surrounding lands and possessions. He also gave large possessions and donations to the Caris Hermitage of St. Sabas and the Holy Archangels in Jerusalem and to many other monasteries. Dusan was the only medieval lord who spent a lot of his time in Mount Athos and at the same time from there ruled the empire, spending nine months there together with his wife around 1347. Empress Yelena, wife of the Emperor Stefan Dusan, was among the very few women allowed to visit and stay in Mount Athos. Thanks to the donations by Stefan, the Serbian monastery of Holandar was enlarged to more than 10,000 hectares, thus having the largest possessions on Mount Athos among other monasteries, and occupying one third of the area. Serbian nobleman Antoni Bagas, together with Nikola Radonja, bought and restored the ruined Agio Pavlo Monastery Monastery between 1355 and 1365, becoming its abbot. The time of the Serbian Empire was a prosperous period for Holandar and of other monasteries in Mount Athos, and many of them were restored and rebuilt and significantly enlarged. Donations continued after the fall of the Serbian Empire, and Lazar of Serbia and the later Brankovic dynasty continued to support the monastic community. Serbian magnate Radic Veliki Selnik restored the Konstamanitu monastery after the 1420 fire and then took monastic vows and received the name Roman after 1433. Serbian princess Mara Brankovic was the second Serbian woman that was granted permissions to visit area. As a wife of Murad II, Mara Brankovic used her influence on the Ottoman court to secure the special status of Mount Athos inside the Ottoman Empire. At the end of the 15th century five monasteries on Mount Athos had Serbian monks and were under the Serbian prior, Dashieriu, Grigorio, Au Pavlo, Au Dionysio and Hilanderander Ottoman rule many Serbian nobles including ones who were under direct Ottoman rule or had accepted the Muslim faith continued their support for Mount Athos. In modern times after the end of Ottoman rule new Serbian kings from the Abrenovic dynasty and Karadurdovic dynasty and the new bourgeois class continued their support of Mount Athos. After the dissolution of SFRY many presidents and prime ministers of Serbia visited Mount Athos. The Byzantine Empire ceased to exist in the 15th century and the Ottoman Empire took its place. The Athenite monks tried to maintain good relations with the Ottoman sultans, and therefore when Murad II conquered Thessaloniki in 1430 they immediately pledged allegiance to him. In return, Murad recognized the monastery's properties, something which Mehmed II formally ratified after the fall of Constantinople in 1453. In this way Athenite independence was preserved. From the account of the Russian pilgrim Isaiah, by the end of the 15th century half of the monasteries were either Slav or Albanian. In particular, Dashieriu, Grigorio, Au Pavlo, Au Dionysio, and Chalandariu were Serbian, Karakalu and Filithiu were Albanian, Pantalimon was Russian, Simonopetra was Bulgarian, Pantokratoros and Stavronikita were Greek, and Zagrafu, Kastamonitu, Zirapotamu, Kautlumausiu, Xenophantos, Iviron, and Protaton did not bear any designation. The 15th and 16th centuries were particularly peaceful for the Athenite community. This led to relative prosperity for the monasteries. An example of this is the foundation of Stavronikita Monastery which completed the current number of Athenite monasteries. Following the conquest of the Serbian despotate by the Ottomans many Serbian monks came to Athos. The extensive presence of Serbian monks is depicted in the numerous elections of Serbian monks to the office of the Protos during the era. Sultan Selim I was a substantial benefactor of the Zirapatamu Monastery. In 1517, he issued a fatwa and a hat i sharif noble edict, that, the place, where the holy gospel is preached, whenever it is burned or even damaged, shall be erected again. He also endowed privileges to the abbey and financed the construction of the dining area and underground of the abbey as well as the renovation of the wall paintings in the central church that were completed between the years 1533 to 1541. Although most time the monasteries were left on their own, the Ottomans heavily taxed them and sometimes they seized important land parcels from them. This eventually culminated in an economic crisis in Athos during the 17th century. This led to the adoption of the so-called Idiorhythmic 
lifestyle a semi-eremitic variant of Christian monasticism by a few monasteries at first and later, during the first half of the 18th century, by all. This new way of monastic organization was an emergency measure taken by the monastic communities to counter their harsh economic environment. Contrary to the Cenobitic system, monks in idiorhythmic communities have private property, work for themselves, they are solely responsible for acquiring food and other necessities and they dine separately in their cells, only meeting with other monks at church. At the same time, the monastery's abbots were replaced by committees and at Carey's the protos was replaced by a four-member committee. In 1749, with the establishment of the Athenite Academy near Vatapethi Monastery, the local monastic community took a leading role in the modern Greek Enlightenment movement of the 18th century. This institution offered high-level education, especially under Eugenios Vulgaris, where ancient philosophy and modern physical science were taught, Russian czars, and princes from Moldavia, Wallachia and Serbia until the end of the 15th century, helped the monasteries survive with large donations. The population of monks and their wealth declined over the next centuries, but were revitalized during the 19th century, particularly by the patronage of the Russian government. As a result, the monastic population grew steadily throughout the century, reaching a high point of over 7,000 monks in 1902. In November 1912, during the First Balkan War, the Ottomans were forced out by the Greek Navy. Greece claimed the peninsula as part of the Peace Treaty of London signed on 30 May 1913. As a result of the shortcomings of the Treaty of London, the Second Balkan War broke out between the combatants in June 1913. A final peace was agreed at the Treaty of Bucharest on 10 August 1913. In June 1913, a small Russian fleet, consisting of the gunboat Dinyets and the transport ships Tsar and Kherson, delivered the Archbishop of Vologda, and a number of troops to Mount Athos to intervene in the theological controversy over Amiaslavy a Russian Orthodox movement. The Archbishop held talks with the Amiaslav Sea and tried to make them change their beliefs voluntarily, but was unsuccessful. On 31 July 1913, the troops stormed the St. Pantalaimon Monastery. Although the monks were not armed and did not actively resist, the troops showed very heavy-handed tactics. After the storming of St. Pantalaimon Monastery, the monks from the Andrievsky Sket surrendered voluntarily. The military transport Kherson was converted into a prison ship and more than a thousand Imyaslav Sea monks were sent to Odessa where they were excommunicated and dispersed throughout Russia. After a brief diplomatic conflict between Greece and Russia over sovereignty, the peninsula formally came under Greek sovereignty after World War I. The self-governed region of the Holy Mountain, according to the decree passed by the Holy Community on 3 October 1913 and according to the International Treaties of London 1913, Bucharest 1913, Newly 1919, Sevres 1920, and Lausanne 1923, is considered part of the Greek state. The decree, made in the presence of the holy icon of Axion Eston, stated that the Holy Community recognized the kings of Greece as the lawful sovereigns and successors on the mountain of the emperors who built the monasteries and declared its territory as belonging to the then kingdom of greece political instability in greece during the mid 20th century that affected mount athos included nazi occupation from the easter season of 1941 through late 1944 followed immediately by the greek civil war in a struggle where communist efforts failed the battle of greece was reported in time magazine the Stukas swooped across the Aegean skies like dark, dreadful birds, but they dropped no bombs on the monks of Mount Athos." After the Nazi takeover of Greece, the Epistasia, Athos's four-member executive committee, formally asked Hitler to place the autonomous monastic state under his personal protection, and Hitler agreed. Mount Athos survived World War II nearly untouched, and for the remainder of the war, the monks of Mount Athos referred to Adolf Hitler as "...high protector of the holy mountain." German, Hoher Protector des Heiligen Burges, later a special double assembly of the Holy Community in Caries passed the Constitutional Charter of the Holy Mountain, which was ratified by the Greek Parliament. This regime originates from the self-ruled monastic state, as stated on a chrysobal parchment signed and sealed by the Byzantine Emperor Ioannis Zimisus in 972. This important document is preserved in the House of the Holy Administration in Caries. 
The self-rule of the Holy Mountain was later reaffirmed by the Emperor Alexios I Komnenos in 1095. According to the Constitution of Greece, Mount Athos, the monastic state of Agion Oros, is following ancient privilege a self-governed part of the Greek state, whose sovereignty thereon shall remain intact, and consists of twenty main monasteries which constitute the holy community, and the capital town and administrative centre, Caris, also home to a governor as the representative of the Greek state. The governor is an executive appointee. The status of the holy mountain and the jurisdiction of the Ajorite institutions were expressly described and ratified upon admission of Greece to the European Union then the European Community. On of September 2004, the Eastern Orthodox Patriarch of Alexandria, Peter VII, was killed, together with 16 others, when a Greek military Chinook helicopter in which he was traveling crashed in the Aegean Sea off the peninsula. The Patriarch was heading to Mount Athos. The cause of the crash remains unknown. In 2018, Mount Athos became an issue within the increasingly tense Greece Russia relations. The Greek government denied entry to Russian clerics headed for the monastery, and the media reported allegations that the Russian government used the mountain as a base for intelligence operations. Relations were worsened in October after the Russian Orthodox Church banned its adherents from visiting sites controlled by Patriarch Bartholomew I of Constantinople, which includes Mount Athos. The monasteries of Mount Athos have a history of opposing ecumenism, or movements towards reconciliation between the Orthodox Church of Constantinople and the Roman Catholic Church. The Asphigmanu Monastery is particularly outspoken in this respect, having raised black flags to protest against the meeting of Patriarch Athenagoras I of Constantinople and Pope Paul VI in 1972. Asphigmanu was subsequently expelled from the representative bodies of the Athenite community. The conflict escalated in 2002 with Patriarch Bartholomew I of Constantinople declaring the monks of Asphigmanu an illegal brotherhood and ordering their eviction. The monks refused to be evicted, and the Patriarch ordered a new brotherhood to replace them. After reaching a low point of just 1,145 mainly elderly monks in 1971, the monasteries have been undergoing a steady and sustained renewal. By the year 2000, the monastic population had reached 1,610, with all 20 monasteries and their associated skets receiving an infusion of mainly young well-educated monks. In 2009, the population stood at nearly 2,000. Many younger monks possess university education and advanced skills that allow them to work on the cataloging and restoration of the mountain's vast repository of manuscripts, vestments, icons, liturgical objects and other works of art, most of which remain unknown to the public because of their sheer volume. Projected to take several decades to complete, this restorative and archival work is well underway, funded by UNESCO and the EU, and aided by many academic institutions. The history of the modern revival of monastic life on Mount Athos and its entry into the technological world of the 21st century has been chronicled in Graham Speak's book, now in its second edition, Mount Athos. Renewal in Paradise There is a prohibition on entry for women, called aviton in Greek, to make living in celibacy easier for men who have chosen to do so. Monks feel that the presence of women alters the social dynamics of the community and therefore slows their path towards spiritual enlightenment. The ban was officially proclaimed by several emperors, including Constantine Monomachos, in a chrysobal of 1046. In the 14th century, Serbian Emperor Dusan the Mighty brought his wife, Helena of Bulgaria, to Mount Athos to protect her from the plague, but she did not touch the ground during her entire visit, as she was carried in a hand carriage all the time. French writer Maurice Choisy entered Mount Athos in the 1920s disguised as a sailor, and later wrote about her escapade in Un mois chez les hommes. A month with men. There was an incident in the 1930s regarding Aliki de Plurico, the first Greek beauty pageant contestant to win the Miss Europe title, who made headlines when she dressed up as a man and sneaked into Mount Athos. Her escapade was discussed in a 13 July 1953 Time magazine article entitled, The Climax of Sin. In 1953, Cora Miller, an American Fulbright program teacher from Athens, Ohio, landed briefly along with two other women, stirring up a controversy among the local monks. A 2003 resolution of the European Parliament requested the lifting of the ban for violating 
the universally recognized principle of gender equality. On the 26th of May 2008, five Moldovans illegally entered Greece by way of Turkey, ending up on Athos. Four of the migrants were women. The monks forgave them for trespassing and informed them that the area was forbidden to females. Female animals, chickens, cows, ewes, nanny goats, mares, and sows are also barred except for female cats, female insects, and female songbirds. Greek is commonly used in all the Greek monasteries, but in some monasteries there are other languages in use. Today, many of the Greek monks also speak foreign languages. Since there are monks from many nations in Athos, they naturally also speak their own native languages. <laughs> 